the innovators of Delay of Game and 2 for 2 comes a new sports talk forum, but with the same mentality, to bring you the top sports headlines in a simple way. With Ryan Swanigan. I only glaze, uh, not glaze, glaze, I glazed over it, yeah. Now you're just more than sniffing my socks. L-O-L. And Brent Bonfleur. Oh, okay, so, like, that is totes my fave dress. Say Tuan! Camilla Vajegas. I'm feral. You're listening to The Route, a sports talk podcast. Oh, hello, everybody. It is the last podcast that you will hear me say The Route, believe it or not. It is coming to an end, and this is the last time that we will be uh, discussing the route topics before about roughly a three-week break, and then uh, on January the 10th, I believe, if my calendar is correct, January the 10th is when we will have the first delay of game, the... Pod, the Sports Talk podcast, not the actual show, we're not on the radio or anything, but we will have Delay of Game and its return, and it's also introduction into the podcast world, I guess. That will be on January the 10th. We are looking forward to it. We will have an introductory podcast posted on January the 3rd, just to give you all an idea of what's going on with Delay of Game, how we're going to do this, things like that. And we'll have more information in this podcast of what's going to happen to our previous shows for the route. They're not going to be taken down or deleted or anything. Everything will just change over. But, Brent Bonfleur. Hey. I'm looking forward to it. I'm yeah. so looking forward to it. I Oh, man. I, I, was, I was putting Ryan's intros. Ryan's got goosebumps. I'm putting intros together today already, and it's, oh, man, it sounds awesome. I'm really, really, really excited. Mm for uh, the return of Delay of Game going into a podcast form. We'll see how uh, how that goes. But Would a podcast by any other name sound as good? Well, the route was pretty good. Honestly, the route, the route was pretty good. I'm trying to be Shakespeare here. Oh, all right. Help me out. I'm sorry. No, Delay of Game is the only thing that just sounds there you right go. coming, off right. Of, coming, there you coming go. out of my mouth. There you go. Yeah, pretty much. Um, We have a great show in store today, though, because uh, we have basically three big things that we're going to talk about, plus predictions, and uh, of course, we're also going to get you the information that you you need to know about delay of game. For what we know for right now, there's still details that will be decided later on before January the 3rd, and we will have those posted on um, the route Facebook and Twitter pages. Also, the Delay of Game Facebook page, facebook.com slash Delay of Game. We'll have a lot of information posted there. Go like our page. Check it out. The in- the information for that has already changed as well. So, uh, And the website that the route is on right now will change to Delay of Game, but the route podcasts will still be there because it's kind of dumb to just take all that down. There's some really good stuff on there. Sure. So, because yeah. we're fantastic. Ex- well, I don't know about fantastic. Nah. We mediocre. need we need four people. We need four people to be fantastic. Nah. We only got three. Matt it's Rigby right. will be uh, joining us in delay of game. That's the other surprise announcement. Surprise, Matt Rigby. Woo! He's gonna join us. <laughs> Don't those kids ever get tired of cheering? No, we, they I mean we never just do. we just sit him here in the studio, and Ryan points to him every time. Um, he uh, uh, he needs them to cheer like that. It's pretty uh, obvious, isn't it? Yeah, that's okay. We feed them. Yeah, sometimes. we do. They, they they join us for lunch every day. Yeah, depends on where we're going, but they'll always join us for lunch. Big yeah, well, check, they join we? us for lunch. We just don't always feed them. Uh, that sounds a little bit bad, Brent. I don't <laughs> think you need to be telling the people that. But anyways. Uh, yeah, so Matt Rigby will be joining Delay of Game. I'm really excited to have him join us. Uh, just a very, very insightful guy. Knows what he's talking about. Like, we have never, re- well, actually, we've, we've had, we've had one person in the history of Delay of Game on the show, uh, who didn't know what they were talking about, and that was, that was our mistake. Actually, no, it was two. I take it back. It was two. Um, 
But uh, everybody else that we've had on the LAF game has just been wonderful. Mm. So really excited to have uh, Matt Rigby join us. Speaking of uh, people who do and do not know what they're talking about, it's time for the final rant that will air on the route before I take the rant back to delay of game. Um, because today, and really throughout this past week, I've been hearing a lot of crap about uh, a certain play-by-play announcer for ESPN who has been doing a lot of volleyball play-by-play recently in the national championships and, and, and all that. And uh, it's really kind of uh, kind of upset me. So... Let's get to it! That last rant! Let's go! Yes, it's time for the original Ryan's rant, where Ryan goes off on something that's more fake than fake or completely improbable. This used to air on his old show, but now he's gone from that show, so he's here on the route. And so, Ryan's rant can continue to harvest life's absurd issues that have simple solutions if logic is applied. In short, we just call this segment Ryan's Rant. Boy, I cannot wait to have this on delay of game. I've said that enough. But I haven't said enough because I'm really sick and tired of hearing people just go after Beth Moens, man. I'm keeping this. I'm, I'm literally, I am done. I am done hearing about this. Seriously, I am hearing about I, not everybody. Okay, let me make that clear. Not everybody is hating on Beth Moens, ESPN play by play announcer. But man, oh, you, for those of you who are, what, l- let me first start. What's, what's with the point of hating Beth Mullins? What is wrong with her? Because there's nothing to me as a, I guess, former college play by play announcer at the student radio station 90.3 KRNU. I haven't announced anything since July, but. As an announcer myself, I, I really, I need to know. I need to know. And Brent, maybe you know, because I don't, I, I don't think you've criticized Beth Mullins, but I've heard people criticizing Beth Mullins. What, where's the basis for this hate? What's, what's wrong with Beth Mullins? There's nothing wrong with Beth Mullins. And to me, I think Beth Mullins is probably one of the greatest female play-by-play announcers ever. Because, and to say female play-by-play announcers, that is a rarity. I'm serious. That is a rarity. Guys are always the ones that are into that stuff, that get that job, that get play-by-play jobs. They're, they, they figure it out at some point when they're pursuing it that play-by-play is a science. Pretty much a science. Beth Mullins is probably the only female that I know of anywhere in this country that understands that play-by-play is a science. You have to study it. You have to listen to it. You have to know how to do play-by-play. She knows. There are... I, I seriously cannot think of any other female play-by-play announcers that are at the level that Beth Mullins is at. And she is at the level of every other guy in play-by-play. Vern Lundquist, Sean McDonough, Dan Schulman, Kevin Kugler, you name it. Corey Provis, Len Casper, I, Joe Buck, Al Michaels. She is at that level without a doubt. And yet, there's people hating on her. I don't. I, and I. I can't understand why. I'm hearing people say, you know, Beth Moe, then it's Beth Moons. What a joke! You know, she doesn't. Sound, she sounds funny and stuff. She sounds better than you would. I guarantee you that. She sounds better than you would try to do play by play. You try going into that field. You try keeping up with everything that's going on. Volleyball, 
basketball. You try doing a basketball game. Try doing a men's basketball game. When they got a fast break from coast to coast, somebody lays it up, they weave through three defenders in the paint, driving the lane. I bet you even half of you didn't even know what the heck I just said. You couldn't spit it that you couldn't spit that off if you were doing if you were doing basketball play by play, men's or women's. And that's what you have to do. You have to be going, going, going. Stay up with the players. Who's got the ball? Where are they? If you're doing radio for basketball, that is one of the more difficult things really in in all of sports is to do radio play-by-play for the NBA or college basketball or a- any type of basketball format or game. That is almost... It's one of the more difficult things to do. So for those of you who are hating on Beth Mullins for doing basketball, football, football nonetheless, by the way, and volleyball and what and, and softball and everything else that Beth Mullins does, stop it. Because I guarantee you, you couldn't even come close to the level that Beth Mullins is on right now. Seriously, there are other announcers who 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 people hate that have no basis for the hate what's wrong with them nothing it's, it's the same thing for Beth Mowens what's wrong with Beth Mowens nothing like Joe Buck for example everybody hates Joe Buck I don't hate Joe Buck I don't I I don't know what's wrong with him I can't follow you people that are hating on Joe Buck Tim McCarver eh yeah, okay, I get it. But but frankly, again, you couldn't do the job that they're doing now. You couldn't even reach that level. You couldn't even come close. So if you're hating on Joe Buck or Al Michaels or Beth Mullins, whoever it may be, at whatever station... The reason why you probably are hating them is because you're jealous of their abilities or, or, you know, the position that they're in. Or you're jealous of what they can do that you can't. Which is, again, why I say you couldn't do it. Because it takes so much. It's not like the business college where you go in there, you learn the stuff, and boom, you're done. And you sit back in a fancy suit and make and, and make the money, bring in the dough, have a nice life. Play-by-play, play, again, requires so much dedication and commitment and a lot of studying on not just your own abilities, or excuse me, not, not just the what you're supposed to be doing as a play-by-play announcer, but your abilities and how you weave your ability into doing play-by-play. You have to not only work with a partner, you have to work with yourself and understand your limits, but what you're strong at. A lot of you probably could not do that when it comes to play-by-play. A lot of women in broadcasting can't. That's why you have so many fe- so many women who are sideline reporters. They can do that job very well. But play-by-play is it's something that you have to really be dedicated to. Now, am I saying that women cannot be dedicated to play-by-play? Absolutely not. They certainly can. It just requires so much knowledge about the job and how it goes and everything around it that it just kind of turns off a lot of women. They're not that interested in doing it. Beth Moens is. Beth Moens is doing football. And maybe that's what people are hating on. And if that's the case, that's ridiculous too. That's so dumb. Seriously. Ah! I know. Yeah. You hate, you're hate you hating on Beth Moens because she's doing college football? You should be praising her 
Find me another woman in this country in the broadcasting field that could do play-by-play or that wants to do play-by-play for football and understands the game like Beth Mowens does. Seriously. I I mean... <laughs> you got to be kidding yeah. me! I, I, I have a buddy of mine, another example here, who thinks... That Dave Fleming, San Francisco Giants radio announcer in ESPN play-by-play for for football and for basketball, and I think he even does um, some baseball for Fox or for ESPN, um, and even um, some softball as well, I believe. Dave Fleming and Shelly Smith. Shelly Smith, a very good friend of mine, believe it or not, ESPN reporter, a buddy of mine thinks they suck. And why? Here's his reason why. He thinks there are better crews who could do the game that they're going to do together, which is the Nebraska-UCLA game, the Foster Farms Bowl in Santa Clara. Now, I don't know for sure if Dave Fleming is doing this. I have a, I'm have 90% sure he is, though. But that was the reason that my buddy gave. He thinks there are better crews that could do that game. That is one of the dumbest answers that I have heard. You didn't even say why you think they're bad. Here, here's what you could have said. And you still would have been wrong, for the record. Dave Fleming doesn't keep up with, with what's going on in the field. Or he doesn't know how to pronounce the names of the players for Nebraska or UCLA. Or he doesn't know the formations and stuff. That's what you could have said, and you'd still be wrong, because Dave Fleming knows all that. There's a reason why Dave Fleming is asked to do play-by-play for ESPN when it comes to basketball and football. One, he can do it. Two, he's got play-by-play experience year-round with the San Francisco Giants on KNBR. And... Then ESPN goes and pulls him and does and he does stuff for for them. So Dave Fleming definitely is a lot more talented than you are because he can announce three different sports and he does it year round. With very little vacation too, I believe. Shelly Smith has been in this business a lot longer than you've probably been watching sports. She knows what she's talking about. She can talk to the players. To get insight, she can talk to the coaches to get insight. She knows the questions to ask. She knows how to carry herself on camera. She knows how to be a sports reporter and to do her job. If you were put in that scenario, you couldn't even come close. Guarantee you. Again, dedication. The ability to do it. That's what Beth Mowens... Dave Fleming, Shelly Smith, Joe Buck, all these great play-by-play announcers, they have that ability because they have worked their butts off to get to where they are now. This, again, goes back to what I read about last week and fans in sports. This is one of the bad sides of fans in sports. Criticizing the announcers when they have... No room to do it. If you want to criticize somebody, here's who you should criticize. Criticize somebody who's done something stupid and does it on a consistent basis. If announcers make continuous mistakes that are of the dumb variety, then you have room to criticize them because they're not correcting their mistakes or they just can't fully do their job to the best of the abilities that have been set by the other play-by-play announcers around them. And there are some broadcasters out there who are like that. So if you want to go after somebody in the broadcasting business, play-by-play, sideline reporter, whatever, go after them. Don't go after the people who have an established reputation. Dave Fleming, by the way, is not even 30 years old yet, in case you didn't know that. And he is one of the best in the business. He is probably not the person to be going after because you have no basis to go after him with. Just, oh man. 
It, it drives me up a wall. Saying somebody sucks when you, when you probably haven't even watched them or know their background? Not cool. Not cool. Especially, and, and to me, when, when, when that buddy of mine said what he said about Dave Fleming and Shelly Smith, that, that really upset me. That, that, hmm. Hmm. Was not, uh, was not a fun moment. And uh, I politely responded back. I said, you are wrong. That's all I have to say. You are wrong. But truth of the matter is, is this, this buddy of mine was dead wrong. Completely wrong. Because it got personal for me. Because he was attacking somebody that I knew. And somebody, Brent, that you know, too. And Shelly Smith. Oh, yeah. And Shelly Smith... Shelly Smith is is one of the greats for well, ESPN. And, and you and I, we got to actually see firsthand how good she is. Mm-hmm. We went to a basketball, a Nebraska basketball game with her when she was uh, in Lincoln. Yeah. And we saw how she interacted with people, with mm-hmm. the coaches, with the players. And that's uh, her getting information. Right. That's yeah, yeah. And that's how she does it. And there were refer- – There were. this was the best part. There were officials in that game who – Knew her, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we're like, "Hey, good to see you again." Right? Officials, yeah. Basketball, yeah. Officials, yeah. Yeah, referees, yeah. That knew they brought us out her. to half court, yeah, to talk, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah was Try great. throwing anybody else into that spot who has not been established, or it's an established broadcaster. One one mark of. Uh, of a really good reporter is how many people they know, mm-hmm. how many sources they have. That's why Adam Schefter uh, for ESPN is just skyrocketing in his career. Oh, he's a he god. Gets, yeah, he gets the scoop first, and that's because he knows people. Mm-hmm. Shelly Smith is, you know, she was, uh, you know, she she's Adam Schefter. Uh, she had, especially in California with USC, UCLA, mm-hmm. she broke the, the P. Diddy thing, you know, when he mm-hmm. got in a fight with one of his son's coaches on the mm-hmm. UCLA staff, she was the one, like, breaking that news. So, yeah, uh, give me a break if you want to. And now, I don't know a whole lot about Beth Mowens. I have heard her, but I I guess I don't know what... So I don't know what they're making fun of or mocking or saying yeah. is not good. I, 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 I but, don't either. Uh as as someone who's done this, you know, just for the college station uh, at UNL, it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's not. You have to always be on your toes and thinking ahead and remembering facts about the teams and names. bits of information and names. Even just, it's hard enough just to spit out who has the ball, mm-hmm. like in a basketball game. Mm-hmm. You know, in football, it's one thing. You know, only one player ever has the ball at, at any one time. In basketball, it's just it's you know, you 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 almost run out of time to say anything other than X passes to Y, passes to Z, passes to A, passes to B, passes to C. Mm-hmm. You know, that's hard enough. Let alone actually getting out information um, that people need, especially like you said for radio, where you have to get the time and the score constantly so people know what's happening and you have to describe things and it, it's very very hard that's why so, I, that's why i admire kent pavelka the husker sports network yeah he is somebody that i try to not copy or you know basically i listened to him and how he called the game is like that's how you have to call a basketball game mm-hmm. on the radio yeah you have to be descriptive in right. in Every single thing that's going on, who's got the ball, where they're at. Like, for example, Shields left left side wing, top of the key now, Petaway fires inside Walter Pitchford, you know, pulls back out, mm-hmm. left or right wing, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I, there's no action going on in front of me, so I can't actually get into play by play. But for, you know, you have to describe and describe and describe. Mm-hmm. And Kent Pavelka, does such a fantastic job at play-by-play 
for Nebraska men's basketball on the radio because he's he 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 sounds like that only better. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to describe and you have to do it at light speed, mm-hmm. and, and you have to incorporate, and using very few words and incorporate everything that's going on, not just who and where, mm. what the defense looks like, right? Shot clock time, right? You know, it's things like that. Yeah, and and, you have to and, know when and to also say. try to notice, you know, from an from. I guess out of your peripheral vision, like, you know, other action that's going on away from the ball, what right. Tim Miles is doing, what the other head coach is doing, you know, mm-hmm. all these things that the average person doesn't even think about. They're just watching the ball. Yeah. And right. they're watching the stuff and they're just waiting to either go nuts or jump on somebody for doing a stupid thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, and, and that goes back to, again, the last week's rant. Fans putting on these blinders and just focusing on one thing and not, and seeing things only in their in their way, really, mm-hmm. and not getting the whole picture. Yeah, that's what drives me up a wall. Fans who think that they could do a better job of announcing and calling games are probably like the same people who are like. That think they're good at gambling, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, where it's just like, well, I could, yeah, I, I, I could do that, or you know, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm good with, I'm lucky, I'm, you know, what? It's like, no, you just, you have no clue. Stop, stop saying stuff yeah. to say stuff. Yeah, right. You know that that's that's as simple as it gets when it comes to the subject. Mm-hmm. Stop, stop doing that and 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 if you ever really want to know just how good someone is at their job uh play a portion of a game from someone like beth moans or shelly smith and then play a portion from someone who's actually not good Mm. and hear the difference and then and then say oh yeah yeah you're you're right yeah and believe me I have witnessed that firsthand mm-hmm. here in Lincoln, working for KRNU. I know who's good. I've worked with them. I know who's terrible. I've worked with them. Mm. That's what drives my passion for sports announcing because when I work with somebody who's not good and they don't know it, it's me. It, to I mean, that drives me up a wall, yeah. But it's also like this is how I become better mm-hmm. by analyzing, okay, what do I need to do to make this broadcast sound better? Because the person I'm working with can't. So how do I get better? And there are so many different aspects to that. And when you finally are able to work with somebody who's great, like for me, for example, John Kipper, anything that would go on for any sporting event, First person I'm going to go to is John Kipper Mm -hmm. because John Kipper knows exactly how to do color commentating, how to do play by play, but he incorporates the play by play into his color announcing. So he's covering the aspects that I don't because I have to leave something with him and it's that chemistry between us. That's why our broadcasts would sound so good from what I've heard. Because we just knew each other, we knew who was going to speak where and when, and who was going to talk about what, and we could feed off of each other's banter, and that is why we both worked so hard to to get to the level that we were at, and when you do, it feels great because you know that you have reached a level of solid play-by-play work, but... There is still a long ways to go into making sure you stay just as good as you are now, but become better. You can always become better at play-by-play. Beth Mullins has done exactly that, and she's still not done. And she's a great play-by-play announcer. And for those people who are saying she is not, you have no basis to say that. Because what do you know about play-by-play announcing? That's what I. That, that that's the point of this rant. For those who criticize Beth Mullins, Joe Buck, you know whoever, Dan Shulman, 
whoever it may be. Kevin Kugler. I see a lot of complaints about from people about Kevin Kugler. That also is a personal thing to me because I have worked with Kevin Kugler and I know Kevin Kugler very well. And for those of you who are criticizing those announcers, you try doing what they're doing. Or you try understanding how the business works. And then come back to me and then tell me they suck. And if they do, I'll tell you you're wrong because that means you really haven't thought it through. Because there's no basis. There's no basis for for saying that somebody who's doing a great job that you can't figure out, you can't educate yourself on, saying that they are bad or whatever, there's there's no basis for it because you don't know how how the how play by play announcing works. Saying something just to say it and feel good about yourself and like, yeah, man, I know this. It's like, no, you don't. You don't know that Beth Moans is bad because she's not. Same with any other play by play announcer that that people have listed off that are, you know, oh, I'm tired of this person, Joe Buck. He can get off the air. It's not so why. Because he knows what he's talking about? <laughs> and you don't? He knows more than you do? Is that why? Okay. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I say to that. Um, good grief. That's, that, that's, that's been on my mind for a couple of years, and I'm glad I finally ranted about it. <sighs> Boy, do I feel good, but my goodness. Got a lot of stupid people around here. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, get a break. You're listening to The Route, a sports talk podcast. <laughs> on Facebook.com slash The Route 2 and on Twitter at The underscore Route 2. All right, so we continue on now uh, with the last under review of The Route. Mm. That, may or, that may or may not be a spoiler alert. Um and we're not gonna we're not gonna really have we we couldn't think of an out of play because we really just we we really want to talk about a um, <laughs> little little thing that uh, that that came out over the weekend small cultural phenomenon in, in theaters. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, what it could be. Oh oh, what's this? What's this? I wonder what this could be. Sounds familiar. I don't know what this is, Brent. This is confusing me. What um, is this? That's the soundtrack to the Titanic. Well, that actually might be the soundtrack to the Titanic. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I have no idea what that was, It Brent. was Star Wars. But it was. And then it quickly changed into something else. Oh, wait, yeah. Um, from Ryan's personal collection. I don't think... Oh, I had the shuffle button on. Oh. That's why. I was wondering what was going on there. That really confused me, Brent. Dag it. That, that was a very... Shuffle button. That was very disappointing. Let's try this. Oh! Yes, it was a phenomenal weekend for a certain movie mm. called Star Wars: The yeah. Force Awakens. And uh, I unfortunately did not get to see it with Mr. Brent Bonfleur. No, I we were planning on it. But did, it however, happen. see it with somebody else who I w- was like the last person I would be thinking to see it with. I can't name his name because. You know, some people are, are, you know, they're not supposed to know that he saw it he, because he was supposed to wait. But <laughs> I didn't pressure him into it. I just asked him. I was like, hey, you want to see Star Wars? Like, sure, let's do it. So, all right. So I I didn't see it alone, thankfully. So with a great buddy of mine. Good. <laughs> that makes us all so happy. Yeah, I, quite <laughs> over there. Um, anyways, so, yeah, I got to see it. Brent got to see it. Mm. I'm gonna go see it again. I really, really. I'm gonna see it on Tuesday again with some other friends that didn't get to see it with us the first time. Really? Yeah. They're around town. Yeah. Oh well, I'm gonna be asleep. Never mind. Oh. Some of us have to work overnights. Yeah. And sleep during the day. Sorry. And that stinks. But anyways, 
Probably. I, I, I remember when I saw episode three. And I was pretty into that. Really? Yeah, I was. I was pretty into oh. that. But I may... If I was alive and and if I was 22 when I was in 1977 and I went and saw Star Wars, that probably when I that my reaction and how I was during the entire showing of of The Force Awakens, that's probably how I would have been in 1977 if I was alive, because I. As soon as now, by the way, they did not play the 20th Century Fox fanfare at the beginning. No, oh. they did not play it. Well, uh, which was I, which was disappointing. Yeah, I uh, I was like, whoa, wait, we're getting into we're what? We're starting already? Where's the fanfare? I almost missed the start. Uh, funny story. Uh oh, my friend got um, like advanced tickets. Uh, sold out tickets, you know, to the big fancy theater with the, the Star Wars theme theater up and in the, Omaha, yeah. No, no, here in Lincoln. Oh, Frank. really? Oh, yeah. okay. And, uh, you know, in 3D and everything. And um, so we had tickets already preserved and stuff. We were gonna we were gonna meet there about 15 minutes early and go in, you know, just like you do. Oh, I know, I know where you're going with this story. I read this yesterday or on Friday. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Or or is this no? I don't think you know you what I'm to, about. You to went say. to the Grand Theater, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, and so I'm there at 12:45. The movie started at one mm-hmm. in the afternoon, and uh, he's not there. So I'm like, oh, okay. I thought you're okay. I no. thought you were. I thought you went Thursday. No, no Friday. Oh, Friday. Okay, at, at one. The story and, uh, I was talking about was the guy who 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 booked the entire movie theater. Oh, yeah. Ha! Yeah, that's great. So he, he watched it by himself. I don't know. Or what he, he brought did. some friends. I don't know. I didn't weird. read it. Why would you do that? I don't know. Yeah. All I read was that that he booked the entire theater. But anyways, your yeah. story. So the guy doesn't show up. Yeah, my friend Jared, and uh, so and he had mentioned he had a dentist appointment before, uh, and but he, you know it was at like eleven forty five. He had well over an hour to get there. You know should should have been fine, right? Mm-hmm. Well. Yeah. Twelve fifty comes and goes, and twelve fifty five, and I'm like, oh, yeah. text him, hey, you gonna make it? And he's like, text me back about one o'clock, which is when the movie's supposed to start. And he's well, like, you got twenty minutes of previews, so well, right, yeah, you know, you got some some previews, and so you know, not like too stressed yet, but you know, it's like, ah, oh, I still want to see the previews, you know, because mm-hmm. that's how you see all the great. The great previews and there weren't uh, that many good previews. And uh, just to and he calls and he and he says. Uh, Hey, sorry. I was at the dentist, and I he was turned out to be more than I thought it was. He was lecturing me for a long time, so he had like an hour and fifty minute long dentist appointment. Oh my! And gosh. so he was flying. Oh. I don't know how he didn't get pulled over, but he flew from his dentist appointment all the way downtown. Oh, got a spot. It's so like one fifteen when we give the tickets to the guy, and we hop under the rope and run into the theater. And thankfully, our reserved seats were the very first seats on your left. Wow. <laughs> so we just sat, sat right down literally as the, you know, the um, trademark scrolling text in space Oh, starts. really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, so right as it goes to the star-filled background and then The Force Awakens mm-hmm. in big, bold yellow comes up, that's when we sat down. Yeah. Well, there was so. no fanfare. Getting yeah. back to the original thing, yeah. yeah. There yeah, was right. no fanfare that, that Unfortunately, they played during yeah. the Lucasfilm when it pops up in the screen. Yeah. No fanfare. And I was like, well, um, guys, you're missing, th- there. there's no music. There's missing something to be, here. Yeah. Um, you want to, you want to, can we, can we stop the film? Hey, can we stop the film, please? <laughs> and play the fanfare. Forgot <laughs> the fanfare. Yeah. So, um, but anyways, I, I don't know about you, Brent, but I, I was, from the moment that Star, like you know, the beginning, the Star Wars flashed up there, and and, the, and that, I was glued. Mm. I I was my and my eyes were wide open the yeah. entire way through the film. Yeah, from start to end, and I was I I just oh my goodness! I love I and I said this before we walked in today. 
I love everything about that movie. Mm-hmm. I love everything about it. Even the part that shocked me, shocker, I love that too. Yeah. Even though it's... Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, no spoilers. Yeah, no Although spoilers. Who hasn't uh, seen it by, you know, Monday, uh, or at least Sunday night when most I people I love that part to too. I thought that basically it's... it's and and uh, my friend and I were talking about this after the after we when we walked out. There are a lot of similarities to Episode Four in this movie, and it's I think it's wonderful. Yeah, it's basically it's Episode Four with new characters, new plot line. Everything is new, mm. but it's like a tribute to Episode Four. Yeah. And I, I just, I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. I thought every single thing in there was brilliant. Uh, my friend was talking about some of the uh, cinematography mm. for uh, a certain scene that were, that, that, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. if you notice, you notice something about that, um, I'll have to tell you off air. Yeah. But um, it, it just like, it was a beautifully directed movie put together. Again, I love everything mm. about this movie. Everything. It's oh, oh. JJ Abrams is really a master at what he does mm-hmm. cuz I I never watched any of the old Star Trek, didn't care about Star Trek at all, never liked it, thought mm-hmm. it was weird. And then when he directed the two new like the re, the reboots, mm-hmm. um like they're awesome. Yeah. See, I I don't, really I haven't seen those. Yeah. No, they're really good. I haven't seen the new strike stri- because yeah. I refuse to submit to the idea that Chris Pine is now you know oh well now here's a new guy let's throw in the title of Captain Kirk no 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 there's only one James Tiberius Kirk <laughs> and that is William Shatner uh, okay and there is only one Spock and that is. Uh, I forgot. Oh man, how did I just forget his name? I had it in a uh, Leonard Nimoy. Yeah, there is only one Spock, and it's Leonard Nimoy. And there's only one Bones, and there's only one Scotty, and, and you know, etc. Yeah, and those are those actors, not these new ones. Well, I, some of them have been featured in in other action movies, right? Like, um, like uh, uh, Jack Ryan. Uh, not Jack Ryan. Um, uh, like there's a born like the born film. Yeah, there's a like one of the like the one guy has played in all these action movies like the born a uh, born film. Um, I think the born ultimatum actually. Mm. Um, or maybe it's the born legacy. I think it might be the born legacy. I yeah, yeah born legacy. Born probably. legacy. Yeah, and I think ultimatum um, was still and red with with Bruce Willis. Oh. It's like, okay, yeah. Mm, yeah, no, this guy is not Star Trek, no. Yeah. Just, no. well, anyway, J.J. Abrams, yes. he's just very, he's very still good. A le- he's and still he, a legend now. Yeah, he he did, he, he, he did what he needed to do with this, which was not to remake something. Mm-hmm. You're not reinventing Star Wars. Exactly. It's episode seven. Yeah. So you have to continuing it. Yeah. Continue on. He stayed very true. It was Mm -hmm. not, you know, it just felt like the next episode. Yeah. Uh, It it felt very natural. It wasn't, you know, there's very little, if anything, that felt forced. And I mentioned that, uh, that uh, there were some, there was a, a, a lot of the movie is like, you know, a tribute to episode four and there's similarities from episode four, but it's also a tribute to one, two, three, mm. four, five, and six. There's, there's like one little niche in, in a different, there's a, a single niche in each part of the movie that references each episode. Right. For example, the Sith are mentioned. That covers one through three, specifically one. There's um, continuous mentions of the Republic. That mm. goes back to one, two, and three. Um, there's also um, uh, the well, Galactic Empire. That right. goes back to three. Yeah, I think there's even a a um, 
a clone trooper reference that yeah, goes there back is, to there two. Is one. Yeah. Well, and that's that was the uh, was another good thing about it was you didn't have to see all of the movies to actually understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. You probably needed to see the middle three, which were actually the first three. Four, that yeah, were the made. first three, but it's four, five, and six. Basically. Right, four, five, and six, which were the ones made back in the seventies. The original trilogy. Right. Um, but you didn't have to see all of them, and they did a pretty good job of, of that for because mm-hmm. a lot of people it's the first time they've ever seen star wars mm-hmm. you know um it's it's for the new generation so it, it, they they i mean i think they just they really did everything that they needed to do which was not stray from tradition yep. to continue what was already a good thing mm-hmm. but make it accessible for people who had never seen mm-hmm. the others i think they did all those things the sound because effects you, yeah well because the actors except yeah. There's there's one sound effect, and I don't want to give this away because this might be a spoiler, but oh. there's one sound effect in there for one of the primary characters that... Now, granted, it's a new age of Star Wars. Right. So, so some stuff the has similar, to change. Yes. Yeah. But the other sound effect that is opposite of the one I'm talking about sounds the same as every other movie. Mm. So that's another part where it's a clash between new or not a clash a a mixing i guess of new and old and it's great i love it i think it's just absolutely brilliant but um a lot of the sound effects Mm. a lot of them i mean a lot of them were the same yeah as all the other movies before and And that's one of the the big the big parts is uh you know because obviously you want improved um, video mm-hmm. and sound quality from from the other ones. You'd mm-hmm. expect that, um, but the sound is so key. Yes, you know the droid beeps, the blaster mm-hmm. fire, mm-hmm. the you know the lightsabers, the lightsabers, exactly. You know um, all those things, the screeching of Tie Fighters. Mm-hmm. You know all those things, and yeah, they just they did a very very good job. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go see it again, and it made me want to watch. All the old ones. I know, and I don't have time. <laughs> I know. I just it well, stinks. Well, I'm gonna have some time in a couple of days. I'm yeah, gonna you. sit down and, and what yeah. is school? I know. It's, that's the it's the last time before I have to work the rest of my life. Oh, it's not that bad. Yeah, you just gotta deal with some people. You yeah, know, right? I'll leave it at that. Yeah. But probably. anyways, go see Star Wars if you haven't. You have to. Mm-hmm. It is ah. Uh, Exactly. Ah! I'm just freaking out about it. It is just an unbelievable movie. And again, I can't say this enough. I love every single thing about it. Just absolutely brilliant stuff. Completely brilliant. You're listening to The Route, a sports talk podcast. Available online at theroute.wordpress.com. And on YouTube. It's time now for... It's your world, and we're just living in it. A story about a selfish athlete, coach, or just a person in general from the week. So I figured we couldn't leave this show, leave this one last route, without having somebody to go after. And I guess it's not somebody. It, it It's... It's the bad fans in sports who put on those blinders and mm. see things only their way. Because, I, again, going back to my rant, that's, that's one of the biggest problems in sports is people who don't get it. Yeah, They only get one thing. They don't get the big picture. Mm. They don't try to understand the elements that factor into a scenario. They just... Live in their world, yeah, and we're all just living in it with them. Yeah, that's all I can summarize it up for. Very, very short. It's your world, and we're just living well, in it. But... I had a little honorary, that, and this doesn't really fit the category that well, but I just wanted to get it in somewhere. Mm, yeah, go ahead. Which is my Baltimore Ravens today. You know, they're in the hunt for the number one draft pick. Mm, they're yes. just, uh, you know, when you lose your Dumpster starting fire. quarterback and you don't have any wide receivers, and you no. Know, Real running backs to speak of, and your yeah, really secondary is decimated. Talent deflated. Yeah, um, you're on your Super Bowl low. 
coming mm. they're still coming down off that that Super Bowl, which is like four years ago. It's like okay, guys. Uh, <laughs> Except last year. Well, they're decent, but yeah, not good to game the, against the Patriots last year. Yeah, not to the standard the AFC that, playoffs. You know, we used to, but um, but anyway, they are wearing some of the ugliest uniforms I've ever seen. So Uh-oh. the normal black helmet with the Raven, shiny black, you know, looks cool. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing too flashy, but looks good. They're royal purple jerseys with uh, the black trim and you know the numbers and so you know mm-hmm. you know pretty good, pretty good. Um, and then they decided to go with gold and black pants, which look very uh. much yeah, like the pants. Like it looks like their laundry got mixed up with like the Saints, you know those gold. Those gold and black pants the Saints wear sometimes. It looks like they got not not primarily black with you know like gold accents. That um, would look okay still, you know, because they typically wear purple jerseys and black pants. But primarily gold with a black stripe and black trim, and it just oh looks my god awful. So I guess they are selfish in the way that you know. They want to try this out, even though it's at the cost of everyone's eyes yeah. who are watching this game, because it just looks like you know, like like they spilled tapioca well, that's, that's, pudding all over their pants. Now is this part? It looks terrible. <laughs> is this part of the NFL's no, color it's thing? Not, uh, no, it's they not. Did that, they did this themselves. Oh no! No, it's not like they just have like a like what? a neon purple uniforms or something. No, this is their standard tops. You which, gotta be kidding me! You know, I think are, are pretty cool looking. The purple and the black and the gold. You know, it looks it looks it looks good. I, I've never seen these pants before. I think they're brand new. I don't know. I've never seen. They're just awful. Gold pants. You kidding just, me? Yeah. You know, it's kind of like a mix. Yeah, between like what maybe the Saints would wear or maybe like the 49ers pants. And it's just like. Well, the top half of them matches, and then the bottom half. Uh, but they're tied with the Chiefs, so with hey. the Chiefs. Oh, yeah. man. oh, that was terrible. My goodness, Chiefs are like one of the hottest teams in the NFL right yeah, now. Yeah, Chiefs and the Jets, man. Yeah. My goodness. All right. Well, probably so. a fan to me. Probably can blame the fans one way or another with that one. Yeah, I guess right. it always goes back to them at the end of the day. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, Brett Bondfleur, it's. Their world, and we're just like exactly. Because yeah. we're the only ones with our heads on straight. Yeah. All right, uh, last set of predictions for the route before everything gets moved over to lay of game. And before we get into that, I want to make a couple quick couple of announcements for those of you who are still listening this far into mm. the podcast. Um, so again, delay of game will have its debut January third. That is when. Everything will be released. We'll have an introductory podcast. Uh, so we'll have that out. And we will also have links to the other various ways that you can check out Delay of Game. The Route website, the Route2.wordpress.com, will change to Delay of Game. I don't know if it will be Delay of Game.wordpress.com. I'm hoping, hoping that will be the case. Um, but you never know. We'll see what happens. Um, but, so we will have a website. We will have a Twitter page. I don't know what the Delay of Game Twitter page will feature. Um, but it will be there in some way, shape, or form. You can, for sure, find out all of this information about what will be happening for Delay of Game on the Delay of Game Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Delay of Game. Our first actual podcast that will feature the three of us, myself, Brent Bonfleur, and Matt Rigby, Rigby, excuse me, will be on Sunday, January the 10th. That's when we will record our podcast and, and debut it on the various media outlets. Oh, our YouTube page. I almost forgot. So we will have also the YouTube page will just change over from the route to delay of game. So I don't know what the web address will be, if there is a specific one, but um, the route stuff will still stay on our website and on our uh, YouTube page. It will just start have it will start having delay of game stuff. You know the delay of game logo will be there. It will be all delay of game, uh, but we'll still have the route clips up there. 
Um, there will be a tab on our website. I just forgot the details of this until now. There will be a tab that says the route on the Delay of Game website in which you can go back and listen to all the episodes of the route. It will be all on that one page. Um, so that's basically what's going to go on yeah, with the route. Well, stuff. There you go. So now to the predictions, Patriots and Jets. We're starting with the NFL. Brent Bonfleur. Mm, uh, you got to go Patriots, but this could be one of their kind of like letdown games. It could be a Jets victory. Yeah, uh, this is much more interesting than people give credit for. I know that Jets uh, have been really up and down, right. um, but I still think they're a good team. I think they'll make the playoffs. Um but I'm going to go Patriots in this yeah. one. You can't bet against uh, playoffs. Yeah, pl- yeah, what? They're in the wild card against the Chiefs for that matter yeah. right now as it stands. Yeah, and if my Ravens can keep doing what they're doing, Chiefs are going to go down. So That's very surprising. Oh, no, the Chiefs are leading at the end of the uh What, they the get a field quarter. goal or something? Touchdown. Oh. Touchdown. Touchdown. Kansas City. Yeah. Uh, anyways, next, uh, I'm going Patriots as well. Packers and Cardinals oh. in Arizona, I believe. <sighs> This is a t- tricky one. Cardinals. Yeah. Uh, in Arizona, I think they're finally at that point where they've, I think they've surpassed the Packers as uh, as kind of the, you know, second best team in the in the NFC. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to go with Arizona. Yeah. I'm going to go might, with Arizona that, too. I mean, they're probably the best team in the NFC this season. That's so dangerous. Uh, it's such, talk, such it's, a great yeah. secondary. Their D-line, their, their front their seven is fine. Is, yeah, their whole defense but is pretty good. Carson Palmer with three dangerous wide receivers yeah. and Chris Johnson. Yeah, Ooh. when he gets back. Or yeah. David, Johnson, David Johnson, too. Johnson David right Johnson's now. been doing yeah. very good as well. I think, yeah, that that's how you know you got a, a, a good offense is when you can just throw guys in there. It's like the Patriots, you know. You mm-hmm. just throw them in and they do well. So, yeah, yeah, they're they're very dangerous. Definitely. Uh, Bengals, Broncos. This is a week from tomorrow night, Monday night, the 28th, I believe, if I uh, think correctly. I'm going to go Denver, and I don't think it'll be too... Um, close. Well, I think it'll be close because I don't think they're going to score a lot. But Denver, without their starting quarterback, is a lot better off than Cincinnati, Cincinnati without yeah. their starting quarterback. I agree because uh, Denver's, you know, Cincinnati's defense is no, you know, slouch mm-hmm. uh, of a group. They're they're very good. But boy, you take Andy Dalton out of the mix, and I don't trust Cincinnati to score points. Yeah, and Denver's defense is. Still, I think rated the best in the league. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, Denver in that one. All right, um, I'm gonna go with Broncos too. It's it's almost not even close. I think. I think the Broncos will will handle it very well. Uh, Pacers and Spurs. We go to the NBA now. Pacers Spurs. Mr. Brent. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Pacers. Actually, really? Yeah. Well. Uh, I mean, they're hot. They're just probably as hot as anyone they're right now. They're very good. Yeah, they are very good. And I think Eastern this Conference is, is not I, that yeah, It's so it's hard to pick against San Antonio, bad. though, because, you know, now they've got some younger talent. But I still, I think overall, uh, it's just sort of one of those games where you start to see a little bit more of the future right. finally catch up with, with the past. Pacers but, are the second best team in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. Behind the Cavs? Yeah. 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 Interestingly enough, mm. of course, now that's, of course, you know, there's four other teams that are better than the uh, than the Pacers right now, if you yeah, combine both San leagues. Antonio. But yeah. it's interesting to see the Eastern Conference right now and who is good and who is not. Some very surprising things, and we'll probably mm. talk about this on Delay of Game going into 2016, uh, talking about the NBA and, yeah, and right. what's been going on. For uh, twenty the twenty fifteen portion of the NBA, uh, Pistons and Hawks. This is actually a really good matchup. I'm gonna go Hawks. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think so. I'm gonna go Hawks too. Even though th- th- this could go either way, I think the Pistons. Stan Van Gundy, man, <laughs> give him some time. <laughs> yeah, he'll build it up. Yeah, oh, geez. He's, he, I think he's doing uh, and leave pretty just good in job. time to see it actually come to fruition. <laughs> mm, I don't know about that, but and then finally or get kicked out just in time. Yeah, that too. Finally. Christmas Day, Cavs Warriors. Oh, Ooh. such a good basketball game! My oh goodness. my goodness, you'll be drooling over this game. I'm gonna go Warriors. Yeah, I, that a baby. I mean, how can you pick against them? Seriously, mm. no one picked the 
Milwaukee to upset them. Mm-hmm. No one. Mm-hmm. No one. Um, I think this is probably outside of uh, maybe OKC or San Antonio. The Cavs are the only team that can possibly bring them down. Yeah. So I, I think it'll be a good game, but I just think they've got way too much talent. There's four teams right now in the NBA currently, as of the 20th of December, that have single-digit losses. The Cavs have seven. The Oklahoma City Thunder have nine. San Antonio has five. And the Golden State Warriors, my team, have one. Have one. Just so beautiful. <laughs> Finally to college basketball, Iowa State and Cincinnati. Woo! Oh, man. man. Yeah, Iowa State. I can't believe it picked them Whoa! to win in any sport, but yeah, they're they're on fire. Mm. And uh, yeah, even though gonna... they just lost to Northern Iowa, well, yeah, that's true. But they're still what fifth? Yeah, they are in the country. Now. They won't be after after that loss. Yeah, well, I I think they win. I'm going with Cincinnati. Really? I think uh, I think Mick Cronin in that grinded out style. We're going with Cincinnati. That's all I got to say. Mm. We're going with Cincinnati. Yeah, we're on the Cincinnati. Bill We're Belichick. Cincinnati, yep. Yeah. There you go. By the way, I did not, funny, funny fact, I did not know that Mick Cronin had a southern accent. I'd never heard him actually, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> speak normally, yeah. ever, until, uh, a couple like yelling, week, you mean? until a weekend ago, and yeah. I heard him in a pregame interview, I was like, oh my gosh, huh. he's got a very nice Alabama southern accent. Very interesting. <laughs> okay. Alabama accent, excuse me. Uh, anyways, another one: Cal versus Virginia. Oof, mm, uh, good matchup. Yeah, I have a thing for for both basketball programs. One was was kind of forced upon me by some friends of mine. The other one was just kind of just picked up on it. Cal basketball. I haven't kept up with Cal because they had a couple losses, didn't they? Yeah, they only got two, two yeah. or three. Yeah, they're not bad. They're no, not they're bad not bad. All. But yeah, um. I'm gonna go Virginia. Yeah, just just Virginia momentum. just beat uh, Villanova yesterday. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Virginia too. Uh, I hope this is as good of good of a matchup as I think it will be. Mm. Uh, but you never know. It, it it may or may not. I don't think it will. But let's go with I'll go with Virginia. And finally, Louisville against Kentucky. Brent, what an interesting matchup. Kentucky. Yeah. 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 I mean. What's Louisville ranked? They are nineteenth. They're somewhere towards the bottom portion of the top twenty-five. Is, oh, they're like four or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kentucky. Yeah. They're just a little bit too good. Yeah. Oh, is that all? I thought you were going to say more. Oh no, I took a breath like you were going to say more there, but <laughs> uh, it's just because I'm out of breath. Ryan. You're exhausted from this. This show. My, my predictions are just. You know, mm. takes a lot out yeah. of me. Of course. Those predictions are on our Facebook page, which is going to disappear oh. by the first week of January. That's too so, bad. So uh, it is a shame, but, you know, it's, it's you know. What are you going to do? We're, we're, yeah, we got two. I don't want two. I want one, and it will be delay of game. So uh, the route Facebook page will die off ah. uh, the first week of January at some point. Uh, but you, of course, can find information until then. About delay of game, the future of uh, what's going to be happening with delay of game, the locations for Twitter, Facebook, our website, and uh, all of that fun stuff that will be happening with delay of game when it debuts our introductory podcast on January the 3rd, mm. and then our first full-length podcast with myself, Brett Bonfleur, and Matt Rigby on January the 10th. I am really Really excited to bring back Delay of Game and ha- be able to even say, like, this is Delay of Game. You're listening to Delay of Game. Right. It's it's just, I'm so excited. Almost as excited as I was to see Star Wars. Almost. Almost. Really? That yeah. was more exciting for you. Star Wars? Yeah. Absolutely. I didn't think Are anything you kidding could take me? the place of Delay of Game. Oh, Star Wars all the way, man. My oh, goodness. All right. Okay. That was, oh. I didn't know you. Yeah. Greatest thing I've ever seen yet. I underestimated your fanaticism. See, it's very difficult to for me to like pick. You know, what's your favorite movie? Well, pff, I don't know. I like all of them. Right. Especially the Liam Neeson ones <laughs> or the Bourne films. But I can now say Star Wars: The Force Awakens. It's your favorite movie? It's my favorite. Wow! Movie. All right. Yeah. 
That hey. may still be a little bit of initial reaction in there me, but yeah, um, I'll take it anyway. Thank you so much for listening to The Route for the past couple of months. It's been fun. It's been great. I'm very glad to know that I could create something from scratch. That made me feel a lot more confident about my sports broadcasting abilities. And Brent, great co-host, as yeah, always. I'm so sad. We'll see him on the live game in 2016. You'll hear me as well. You'll hear Matt Rigby. We'll have so many guests. Thank you for tuning into The Route. Thank you, everybody. Looking forward to starting delay of game mm. next year. <laughs>